What's going on? It's your boy Flair, and today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to properly use Kage Kage No Me. First move I'm gonna be going over is bat tornadoes. All right, this move, which I actually use a lot when I'm doing PvP. To pair it up, I'm gonna be using Rage and Rail because I found that it's best after you do another dominant combo. For example, since I'm using two sword style, I'll do four and ones, then Rage and Rail. Then I'll switch back, do three more and one with my two sword style, then one and one with Kage, and then go on to do bat tornadoes. Here's how it looks. Now, another important thing to mention, I switched my weapon so I can show you guys. When you're doing bat tornadoes, you don't want to do four and ones and then do it. For example, you see how it's delayed because the end lag. So what you do to counter that is this. Basically, what you're gonna do is do three and ones and then switch over. That's why I switch over. So see how fast you did at that time. So when you're going for bat tornadoes and you're using a weapon or fighting style, do three M1s with that weapon or fighting style, then switch over to Kage, do another M1 and follow it with bat tornadoes. But because I was doing two sword style. Now, another thing to mention when you do bat tornadoes, if you want to try to keep on going right afterwards, is you can control where you end up on bat tornadoes. Like you can appear on the side, in front of them, back of them it's all about your timing and when you let go for example if I'm right here and I do bat tornadoes you see I appeared right in front of them and that's what most people do but what I like to do is time it and let go a little bit earlier because if you spawn behind them they're probably not gonna expect it you can get another set of M1s off I'll show you right here see how I spawn behind them it's real easy to do because you can tell where your character is as you're doing bat tornadoes like I don't know how to explain it because like basically your camera angle that's a good way to put it your camera angle is where your character is so if you want your, if your camera is facing the back of you, you're gonna spawn in the back same way on the sides and the front and all that extra stuff but I find it is really best when you spawn behind them because when you spawn in the front, they can honestly look. See that animation? They can probably hit me out of that. But when you spawn in the back of them, you just go straight to M1 and here's how that looks. You see that? It didn't put me in that weird animation. So that's what I found really goes good with Bat Tornadoes. Your, your boy Flair just woke up. It's 7.35 a.m. right now. I woke up at 6. For, I miss Brooke. Your boy Flair miss Brooke. Anyway. <laughs> okay, now we're going on to the next move, which is Shadow Trap. The best way I found to use this move is after a 5 and 1 combo. For example. Oops. Here we go. That's what I find. It's real easy to do that. Depending on your build, you can find another way to incorporate it, but you can do it this way no matter the build, no matter the weapon, whatever you do. Like, I can just use my fist. That was the wrong move, but it kind of honestly worked the exact same way. You see that? <clears throat> That's what I found the best way to use Shadow Trap. You can up tilt and do it, but like, 
That's kind of pointless. You might as well get the extra set of M1s. Here's how my combo been. So that's really what I've been cooking up. Really easy way to make sure you hit your shadow trap. And it's a guard break as well. And it hits twice. You got the initial hit of putting them in a box and then a slam. So that's one hit, then a slam. Now we're gonna talk about fleeing shadows. Now I basically use this move if my opponent's running away or if I want to get away from a move, for example. If a Pika is about to do um, mirror kick, this is when I'll do this. All right. If like a Mago is about to launch their ult and I have time, I'm gonna go fling shadows and try to recover. You can use it to travel, but it's like you might as well just use a boat, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Like you can come over here, gapo, fling shadows, keep on gaboing, and do it over and over. But like. It's not worth, you're better off just getting the boat. So I really use Fling Shadows to do the name and that's Flea in PvP. Now we're gonna talk about Shadow Grasp, which is that move. Also a guard break. I usually like to do Shadow Grasp right afterwards. So you go boom. If you just aim your cursor near them, they're getting hit. You don't have to even aim. Like, like you, your aim doesn't have to be nowhere near perfect. I would just spam me near it. And it's a guaranteed hit. It's also a guard break. I love stacking those moves, doing them one after another. It goes perfectly. And you can do it with the air combo, for example. You see that? Now the next move is Brawling Shadows, alright? Um, now I don't use this too much because honestly, sometimes I forget, but there, there is a great way you can incorporate. Here's how it looks. You basically pop up wherever your cursor is. Now I don't want you guys thinking the range is stupid OP. It's not that good of range, but it's not bad. It could be way worse. For example, I'm right here. See, I was able to hit him. But if I go somewhere like right here, because right here, you can still do your other moves besides burrowing shadows shadows but you can do shadow grasp in the box but if I want to do um boring shadows right here see it's not gonna go that far so it does have some range that you have to be aware of but a way I like to use this honestly is right after I do my shadow box and grab combo for example dash for just like that just like that so if you guys missed it I did the M1 up tilt combo hit him in a box grab him just do one dash forward aim your cursor near him usually every time you do the box and grab combo they're gonna like fling backwards they shouldn't go to the side or nothing like that so it's always them going backwards so just dash forward hit your move and you're good and then we have your shadow clone now something about the shadow clone, I'm not going to spawn him, well here I'll spawn him. Now for the shadow clone, he takes your stamina, he takes your stamina, okay? So I don't, like for Kage, if you want to utilize your shadow clone in the proper way, you're going to need to have some stamina because I like, I like to do moves on top of my shadow clone. Some people like to just spawn them and let them go to work, I like to do moves on top of mine and like basically jump somebody, so... You see that? You see that stamina drain? Because we're both using moves. So he is going to drain your stamina. So when you do have Kage, try your best to have good regen. This is my alt, so I don't have all my regen items. But I do have a good amount of stamina, as you can see. Also, I have Mink, so if you don't have Mink, try to put a little bit more points in there. Oh my god, what did, when did they get out there? Yo, see, call him off, bro. See, your, sh your shadow clone be going crazy. Y'all gotta be careful when you're dealing with him. 
Alright, I'm sorry for the inconvenience of this dude. Alright, I don't know what he was doing. I'll do it again for you. That's basically what I'll be doing. You can honestly incorporate and mix up other things like I could have mixed in 72 caliber Phoenix or you know the total strike, but that's just Kage alone. It's really good and fun. Hopefully you boys enjoyed this video. I love y'all as always. It's your boy Flair. I'm out. Peace.